This will be a training session for our Allen & Heath QU24 digital soundboard. I'm going to start our sound video in a bit of an unconventional way back in the back corner of the auditorium at a light switch. If you think about the functioning of this light switch, I think it will make some of our discussion later make a little bit more sense. You know, if you think about what this light switch does, if we come down and hit the button for worship, it automatically turns on the bank of lights in the hallway. It automatically turns on all the different banks of lights in the auditorium. Imagine if we did not have this single push button control for all of our lights. We would either have to have a bank of 20 light switches right here in this corner or even maybe throughout the building light switches all over the place that you had to go to each individual light switch and turn it on for each service and then off at the end. Instead we can simply come here hit one button hit another button and we're good to go. Hopefully that will make some of this other things make more sense when we start talking about our soundboard. So now that we're back up in the sound room I want you to visualize the soundboard in much the same way we just talked about with that bank of light switches. That one button on that light switch controls numerous lighting fixtures all with the press of one button. Now what I want you to visualize is four different soundboards. and think about how difficult it would be to have one person stand up here and control four different soundboards all at the same time in the same live setting. So instead with a digital board you don't have to do that. Much like the light switches downstairs, one button can control all four soundboards at one time. The number one lesson of this video is always, always, always start with the soft keys of the soundboard. We'll talk more about those in just a minute. But I want to demonstrate how these four different soundboards work. So if you notice here, four different sliders have gone up. These are the four sliders when you're on the front of house. Front of house is the main speakers at the front of the auditorium. So we've controlled those with one press of a button. If you come over and look at live, that is a completely new soundboard. So if you were going to control these independently, you would go front of house, make your adjustments here, then you would also have to go live. But that's not it. You also have another soundboard. That's the PC. That's the sound going straight into the podcast version. We also have another soundboard. That's for the hearing aid assist system. And then we have a fifth soundboard, and that's for the hallways. So if you don't take the easy shortcut of pressing one button, just like on the light switches, you literally have to go to each version of the soundboard and make adjustments. Otherwise, the sound will not get adjusted across the entire spectrum. Most of the time, if you're running sound for a live service, this is the part of the board you will spend most of your time, maybe even all of your time, on any given service. We have program soft keys here with some of the most common things we use. But then up in this section, you can access by pressing the scenes button if it's not already lit up. You can see other pre-programmed functions that again work much like those light switches downstairs. So if you look at the top number one, that's Jamie leading. This button does the exact same thing. But if you didn't want to use these buttons, you can come over here to up and down. You would go up when it's on Jamie leading. You would press go. And that does the same thing as this button. If it's time for Rob to preach, you can simply press Rob and that will adjust everything to the ROB setting. 
Now, if it's time for another song, you can either press Jamie lead or you can go over to your soft keys here, go back up to the lead and hit go. And you see it automatically adjust the soundboard. Not only does it adjust this version, it adjusts every one of these as well. So if you think about the podium mic, so it's time for the Lord's Supper or prayer. So the podium mic is where we would go. So I'm going to push this button just a moment, but watch the faders. So the podium mic automatically comes up to where it needs to be. But also on every other soundboard, it's still the podium mic setting. That's where it needs to be. That's the number one rule on this digital board is always start with one of your pre-saved, they're called scenes. Start with those. Here's seven that are just a soft touch button for the scene, but then there's another 20 or so that are in the menu over here. So baptism, for instance, is not one of these buttons. So if we were going to have a baptism, you would go down, highlight baptism. Now at this point, with it highlighted, we're still on the previous function. So this shows what we're currently on. So we're still on the podium, but se number seven, baptism, is highlighted. So when it's time for that to happen, you would just hit go, and then it would change, and it would raise the fader for baptism. Now anytime we're in a live setting, let's say like the last couple of weeks when we were trying to adjust the settings on the new podium mic, you might have to listen and if there's a little bit of a feedback, it's too loud or too soft, you can always come to the feeder, the fader, excuse me, and adjust it right here, up or down, slightly, and that will get you in the ballpark. But you're always going to be close with the preset setting, but if you do need to fine tune, you can do that here. But you would only be fine tuning what's on the front of the house. The other soundboards would stay in their preset state. In most scenarios, you will not have to worry about changing any of the soundboard functions. Those can stay where you're only controlling the front of the house. And ideally, you will not have to adjust anything over here. So again, most of what you will do will either be with these soft keys or the up and down arrows and using your menu right here to determine which setting you're on. I wanted to discuss a couple of potential problems with not using these keys and we have had these happen within the last couple of months and just wanted to make you aware of, of some of the concerns when you do not use it in this regard. For starters, if you see there's a separate button for when I'm leading singing versus when I'm doing announcements. The reason for this is if you watch the soundboard, when I'm leading singing, my microphone is turned down a little bit from normal. The audience mics are turned up pretty loud. So that helps with the overall sound quality. It lets people listening online hear the congregation instead of just me. It also has some vocal effects on the microphones to make the the sound a little bit more pleasing, gives a little bit more reverb to the singing as well, which makes the overall singing sound better if you're listening at home or online. If you watch what happens when I'm speaking, so if I push the speaking button, you'll notice the audience mics come down some, my microphone goes up, it also takes away that vocal effect I mentioned. So it basically makes the speaking part more clear, it also makes it louder in the microphone. Again, especially those that are listening online, it's a clearer sound for them for speaking versus singing. So it's if you forget, then then leading is the best place to leave it because that's the, the more universal setting. But ideally, during announcements or any kind of long talks, prayers, something like that, you would switch to the speaking instead of leave, leave it leading. And that happens instantly. So even if you forget and then it's you know, you're kind of partway through, you can always switch it really quick. Just make sure when it goes to singing that you do go back to the leading setting. Another issue is with, let's say, 
Rob is speaking. And we had this happen a couple of Sundays, I believe, before Christmas. So during Rob's lesson, we had a couple of songs during the lesson. And again, this is not to pick on anyone, just to make you aware. The person operating the sound so during the song, instead of going to the, the song setting, they just went to my microphone and raised my microphone during the singing. Now, that worked fine in the auditorium for the people in the audience. Here's the problem. So look when I do when I go back over here and go to live. So in the in the front of house system, so this one, the main auditorium speakers, my microphone is turned on. If we hit the live button, which is what's going to streaming, my microphone's turned off. So when you go on those Sundays and listen back to the live feed, you can tell that there's singing going on, but it's very soft. You can barely hear anyone singing because my mic and the audience mics are all over. So you want to make sure if it's singing, you go to one of the singing settings and then automatically all of those microphones get increased and it's on all the different channels versus just the one channel you talk, you hit the button on. It goes back to what I said at the beginning. You have to visualize four or five different soundboards that have to be controlled. One button can do that or you have to go to each soundboard and control them all. The podium mic is another one that, that often will will get overlooked. Maybe it's maybe it's on the song leading setting. So it's during the singing part of service, the microphones are up and someone goes up to do a prayer. So rather than hitting the podium mic setting, which changes every soundboard to be set up for podium mic, maybe the user comes over and just slides up the podium mic microphone. Everything sounds like it worked fine because the podium mic is in the speakers in front of the audience. But what did not happen, again, if we go over and hit the live setting, there's no podium mic. So the person listening at home is able to see someone standing up at the podium, but they can't hear anything because the microphone's not turned on. So again, all of this is basically pointing to the importance of the menu here for your soft keys and then these few soft keys that are the most common ones we use. As users, if you find that we are using buttons in this lineup a lot more often than some over here. So like right now we have a classroom setting with the hallways turned off. Maybe that's not something we use a whole lot. We are making changes with the TVs downstairs. So maybe that no longer needs to be a, a soft key and we could reprogram that one to um, be something that we use more often. Unity All Wireless Mics is a good soft key function for Sunday nights or even on singing nights, but you don't want to use that for a Sunday morning. So that's really only to be used on a Sunday night or Wednesday night when really when we're not sure what microphones are being used. If there's several different people that are using a wireless microphone, uh, let's say on a Sunday night we have four or five different song leaders and it's hard to tell from up here which microphone they're using, this setting activates all the wireless mics. Now you would still have to go over for your podium for a prayer but the Unity All Wireless activates all the wireless mics. That way, it doesn't matter which one is up, it will be active. The only concern with that is if they forget to turn the mic off, then the microphone would be live in the feed uh, versus individual microphones. I did want to mention if we are playing a video from Easy Worship, so if Rob was going to have a video during a sermon, we have a special soft key for that. So if you look again at if Rob is speaking, it's only Rob's microphone that's up and then a little bit of audience mic. But if you come up to your menu, use your down arrow, you can scroll down. And there is a Rob with video setting. And if you hit go, it brings up the Easy Worship computer, which would take the video feed. So not only will we have video being broadcast, we would also have the sound from that video that would go into the speakers as well. 
And again, it's not as simple as just raising that slider because look what happens. Every soundboard gets that video as well. So if you're watching at home, you're not just watching video with no audio, you would be able to hear the audio as well. I think this concludes the basic functionality of everyday use of the Allen & Heath QU24 soundboard when using soft keys and preset scenes. If you would like more information on, on getting deeper into the weeds on how to control individual settings for certain microphones, we can have a follow-up session. But for, for most users and most services, this is all the training you'll need. If there's any notes about preferred soft keys or preferred scenes, if you'll just leave a note next to the soundboard, and when I check that, I can easily update those and get those added. If you find that in many different services, you're always having to turn down one microphone or turn up one microphone, I can also go in and adjust that. That way the, the pre-saved version is more closely reflects what we're using day in and day out. So just leave those notes for me. This board does not have to be shut off at the end of service. It can be left on. Uh, we can probably just reset it every once in a while, but for the most part, it would not have to be shut off and it can just stay on when you're done. You would just want to go up and hit the mute all setting. So right there, number eight is mute all go and that mutes all of the microphone channels. That way, if someone accidentally turns the microphone on, they're not going to be blasting throughout the building. Thanks for watching this video and let me know if you have any questions.